Welcome back, Ms. Jatha here, bringing to you a continuation of Lesson 5 of Natural Selection. Remember, we were right in the middle of collecting some data to understand the relationship between ostrolobe color and reproduction. We're going to continue forward with that, starting with Trial 3 and collecting that data. Then we're going to make sense of it during this lesson. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, folks, we're in trial number three now. We are looking at a blue level one ostrolope. And let, just like we did before, let's go ahead and count how many times it reproduces. Here we go. All right, that's reproduce time number one, two, three, Oh, it looks like it's getting chased. So it got to number three there. Reproduce, reproducing three times that blue number one ostrolobe. And notice that um, if you're doing this at home on the simulation yourself, you may be getting different numbers than us, and that's totally fine. You can keep up um, with your own numbers on your own data table if you have access to Amplify from home. We're going to reset and now we're going to go to blue number four ostrolobe for trial number three. Oh, found one right away. Fantastic. Let's follow this ostrolobe and we are counting how many times it is able to reproduce. All right, here's once, twice, three times, and then it gets eaten. So again, with my pen, I'm gonna write that down for trial number three, this ostrolobe with a blue color level of four um, was able to reproduce three times before it got eaten. Okay, I'm going to reset again and let's go to yellow number seven next. Yellow number seven. Here we are. I'm going to zoom in a little bit more and let's follow this ostrolope and see how many times it reproduces. All right, here's one time. Seems to just be hungry at the moment. Oh, and then it got eaten. All right, we need to document that. Grab your pen and this yellow number seven ostrolope only reproduced once before it got eaten this time. All right, I'm gonna refresh and let's move on to yellow number 10 for trial three, everyone. Yellow number 10 for trial three. Let's see if I can find one. That one was a level nine. This one's a level nine. There we go. A yellow 10 ostrolope. Let's go ahead and count how many times this one reproduces. Here's once. Twice. three times, four times, five times, six times, seven times, oh, got a little lonely. Let's see here, where is it headed next? We're at seven times for this ostrolope which has a yellow 10 and it got chased down and eaten after seven times. So with my pen, I'm going to document that on my data table as well. Let's go ahead and reset and we're going to go to trial number four now. All right, folks, we're in trial number four now. We have an ostrolope with a blue color level of one to start out with. Let's go ahead and get started. How many times does it reproduce? 
All right, it just got eaten, so that would be a zero for trial number four, Australope blue color level one. All right, let's reset and go to blue color level of four. There we are. Let's zoom in here and see how many times it reproduces. You can see it hopping, ready to reproduce. Here's once, twice, three times, four times. Oh, looks like it's getting chased. And it reproduced four times before getting eaten. So I'm gonna take my pen and write that down on my chart with a number four under trial four, blue Australope color level four. And I'm gonna reset and go to yellow color seven next. So that one's a little bit too much yellow let's go to yellow color seven here's one and zoom in and let's go ahead and count how many times this australope reproduces here's once twice three times four times five times, six times, seven times, eight times, nine times, 10 times, 11, Hopping again, it's looking for me. 12 times. And then it got eaten. So this Australope, I think it's been the highest we've had so far, has reproduced 12 times before it got eaten. Let's go ahead and restart and let's zoom in for color level yellow 10 for trail number four, found one right away. And let's go ahead and count how many times this one reproduces. All right, it got eaten right away. So I'm gonna put that as a zero on my, da my data table. Let's go ahead with trial number five. We need to get that good scope of data so we can draw some conclusions about uh, what's happening in this population. Here we are in trial number five, our last trial, and I've tracked down an Australope with a blue color level of one. Let's go ahead and get started collecting some data. All right, he's hopping, he's found a mate. This is one time reproducing, and then he got eaten. So I'm gonna mark that down as a number one on my data table, resetting and finding a Australobe with a color level of four. That one was close, here we are. And let's track this one and see how many times it reproduces. That's once. And then unfortunately it got eaten. So I'm gonna put a one on my data table so that's trial five, Australo blue, color level four. That was one time that I reproduced. I'm gonna go ahead and reset now. And I'm going to find an Australope with a yellow color seven. And we're gonna track this Australope and see how many times it reproduces. This is once, twice, three times, four times, 
five times. Oh, wow, this one's high too. I'm noticing that it's definitely higher than the others. Six times. Seven times. Eight times. I wonder if this will beat our record of 12 so far. Oh, maybe not. Okay, so eight times it was able to reproduce before uh, getting eaten. So I'm going to mark that down with my pen on my data table eight times. And now we're going to move to our last point of data, which is an astrolobe with a yellow color of 10. I've just reset. Let me find one of those astrolobes. See here. Those are all three nines. I need a 10. So let me find one of those. Oh, they're a little bit harder, harder to spot this time. It's a yellow nine. Here's a yellow 10. Perfect. Okay. So zooming in and last time we're counting. All right. So this one got eaten right away and I'm putting down a zero on my data table as well. Now, here's what I want you can, I want you to do next. I want you to pause the video and I want you to take the average number of times each of these astrolopes reproduced and I want you to calculate the average for each of those. Now, how do you do that? Remember when you are taking the average of something, you add up all the all the numbers, for example, for blue number one, you're going to add up all the times, uh, the number of times it reproduced and then divide by five because that's how many trials that we did. So go ahead, pause the video, calculate those averages. If you need to use a calculator, that's totally fine. You can use your phone to help you calculate, but come back to me with the averages of each of the diff dis different astrolopes and how many times they reproduced. We just collected so much data, so let's make some sense out of this data and be able to f identify some of the trends and patterns that we have seen so far. So if you were following along with me, your data table should look exactly like this. I've now filled it in with all the numbers that we collected for the number of times um, each of those astrolopes of different colors reproduce. So you, if you were following along with me, your data table should look exactly like this. Now, if you were following along um, using Amplify at home, your numbers are going to be a little bit different. Now, I asked you to uh, calculate the averages of each of these different um, astrolope colors. So let's take a look at that real quick. And of course, if you did this on your own, you will have different averages than I would, but I pretty sure that we will have the same pattern identified. So when we calculate the average here for the astrolopes with a blue color level of one, we are going to count how many times they reproduce. And that was a total of five. And we're going to divide that by the number of trials that happened which was five. And this one was kind of easy actually. The average number of times that a Australobe with a blue color level of one reproduce was an average of one time with the data that we collected. Now let's take a look at Australopes with a blue level of four. Those Australopes had a total of 12 times that they reproduced, but we want an average. Should we divide that by five and we get a average of 2.4, everyone, 2.4. Now, those astrolopes with a yellow color level seven, those had a total of 31 times that they reproduced from what we saw following along with me in the simulation. But we want the average, so we're dividing that by five, and we get an average for yellow seven astrolopes to be at 6.2. 6.2 folks, okay? And then this last category, which was yellow level 10, that had a total number 
of seven times that those australopes reproduced. We divide that by five and we get an average of 1.4, an average of 1.4. So take a minute and make sure you have these averages correct. And I want you to see if you identify some sort of pattern. So take a minute and make sure you're thinking about these averages and um, what pattern that you see. I just took my data here and I actually created a histogram out of it to make it a little bit more um, concise. And so what I've done here is I've taken my averages and I've created a histogram to show the average number of times each of these uh, australopes with these different colors reproduced and thus the average number of offspring that they had as well. So for blue, color level one, we had one. For blue color level four, we had an average of 2.4. For yellow color seven, we have an average of 6.2. And for um, australopes with a yellow color level of 10, we had an average of 1.4. And right off the bat, folks, right off the bat, what I'm noticing here is that our australopes with a yellow color level of seven, had the highest number of times that they reproduced and thus the highest average number of offspring as well. So again, they had the highest average number of times that they reproduced and also the highest average number of offspring. Let's remember we collected all of this data in order to find a response to this investigation question. How do some traits become more common over many generations while others become less common? Remember we're trying to circle this back around to our newts, which we know became more poisonous over time. And we're trying to understand how and why that exactly happened. So, Let's take the data that we just gathered with our Australopes and let's apply it to the situation. And we're going to be doing that through a turn and talk. So turn and talk to your friend or a family member. You can text them if they're watching this video with you. You could also just take your pen and paper and jot your responses down to help make sense of this data that we just collected together. First, what pattern describes the relationship between how long an Australope lived and how many offspring it had? Second question, which Australopes became more common over time and why? Third question, which Australopes became less common over time and why? And fourth question, if the color of the environment became blue, which oscillopes would you, do you think would become more or less common and why? Pause the video, turn and talk to your friend, text someone that's watching this video with you, jot your answers down, and I want you to think about these four questions considering the data that we just collected together via the sim. Go ahead, pause the video now. I hope you had a chance to talk about these questions with someone around you um, because it's so important as scientists for us to collaborate with others and do some sense making here. Um, let's collaborate together right now so we can make sure we're all on the same wavelength about what we noticed. So the first question, what pattern describes the relationship between how long an astrolope lived and how many offspring it had? So what I noticed in the simulation that we did together is that when an astrolope was able to live longer, it was able to have more time and more opportunity to reproduce and thus um, had a higher average number of times it reproduced and a higher average number of offspring. So that's what the relationship is here. When the Australop lives longer, it has more opportunities to reproduce and have offspring. Now for the second question, we already kind of did this together, but just to reiterate the fact that which Australopes became more common over time and why, those were the Australopes with a yellow color of seven, which we already went over right here. So those yellow color seven Australopes had the highest average number of uh, times that they reproduced and thus the higher average number of offspring. Now, 
here's the important part. We didn't really kind of get to why. Um, I think from what I saw in the simulation, why those australopes had the higher average number of times that they reproduce and the higher average number of offspring is because they were able to blend in and camouflage into the environment as well. In our environment, in the simulation, it was a color level of seven. So naturally, those oscillopes that also had a color of seven were able to blend in more and escape those carnathons for a longer duration of time. And so therefore, they had more opportunities to reproduce. Now, question number three, which oscillopes became less common over time and why? So what I notice is that um, our blue and our yellow, blue level one and yellow level 10, um, on those two extremes became less common over time because they stood out a little bit more in the environment. So neither of those um, match the environment and blue number four didn't either, but to a lesser extent, Blue one and blue and yellow 10 both um, were at the extremes where they popped out of the environment more. And because they were not able to blend in, that makes them more likely to be eaten by the carnathons. So therefore, they were not able to reproduce and therefore they became less common over time. Now, here's a prediction question. That was question number four. If the color of the environment became blue, which oscillopes do you think would become more or less common and why? So if we change the environment color to a blue, I think those oscillopes with a blue color one or blue color four would become more common because these two would then have more opportunities to reproduce because they're able to blend in to that uh, environment that would have a blue uh, color. And so because they're able to blend in more, they'll be able to reproduce more and thus have more offspring. And as we know, those parents are carrying the genes for the blue trait. So therefore, their genes would, uh, would um, be expressed as uh, the trait of blue color because they're able to reproduce more in, um, in an environment that is also blue. Based on the evidence we just gathered, I want you to think about this claim that you'll see on your screen in just a second. And I want you to think about if that claim is supported or refuted. And how do you know that that claim is supported or refuted? So let's take a look at this claim right here. Australopes with adaptive traits are more likely to reproduce than australopes with non-adaptive traits. Pause the video talk to someone near you, jot something down, and I want you to really evaluate if this claim was supported or refuted by the evidence that we just collected. All right, I hope you had time to think about that with someone near you or you texted someone about it. And we can see that our evidence points to this claim being supported folks this claim was supported and why our evidence supports this claim is because just like we saw in that simulation those australopes with adaptive traits those that had the yellow color level of seven which blended into the yellow seven environment um, they had more opportunity to reproduce because they survived longer than any of the oscillopes with non-adapted traits, such as those with a blue color level of one, four, or yellow color 10. So when an organism has an adaptive trait, they're going to have more opportunity to reproduce because they might uh, blend into the environment more, and thus they will have a um, higher likelihood of reproducing and thus ability to change and shift the population so that that adaptive trait becomes more common over time. The pattern that we're seeing here is one of causation. In other words, cause and effect, which is right here in our cross-cutting concepts. 
Now, what this looks like, uh, considering the data that we just gathered, is that when Australopes lived longer, because of an adaptive trait that they had, and in the simulation, of course, the adaptive trait was a color level of seven that matched the environment. So when these Australopes lived longer, with that adaptive trait, they were able to reproduce more. And when they were able to reproduce more, they had more offspring. Then what happens is that adaptive trait then becomes more common in the population because that adaptive trait is being passed on from parents to offspring. So when they have more opportunity to reproduce, they're also passing down that adaptive trait to their offspring and therefore that adaptive adaptive trait becomes more common in the population. So here's a summary of what we learned in this lesson. Genes are instructions for making protein molecules and dictate the shape of those proteins. Those protein molecules determine an organism's traits as they fit into another molecule. Individuals inherit their genes from their parents. Genes and therefore traits in a population are passed down from generation to generation. If an individual has an adaptive trait, that individual is more likely to live longer and have more opportunities to reproduce. If an individual does not have an adaptive trait, that individual is less likely to survive long enough to reproduce. Thanks so much for joining me today, and I look forward to seeing you for Lesson 6 next time.